Whether you're planning to buy your first BMW or you've just bought one, you're going to notice that some things are different than some other brands of cars that you might have had in the past. In this video, I want to explain some things that were weird to me when I bought my first BMW. That way you can get the most out of your car from day one. BMW's climate control allows you to dial in the exact temperature that you want using these two knobs in this digital display. But right above that, you've got this like 1990s General Motors hot and cold dial, and you might be wondering what that's for. So it turns out that this hot and cold dial controls these four dashboard vents independently from all the other vents in the car. So in the winter time, obviously we want the cabin to be nice and warm, um, but on longer drives, having that warm air blowing in your face can make you drowsy. So uh, what that does is it allows you to have the cabin temperature nice and warm, let's say 80 degrees or whatever is comfortable for you. And then you can still have the cold air blowing on your face to help keep you alert. Now, if you go on any BMW forum, you'll see a bunch of people asking what that does or complaining that it's a useless feature. But once you figure it out, it's actually a pretty thoughtful design. A lot of first time BMW owners think that they need to treat their car like it's a Ferrari and only have it serviced at the dealership using only genuine BMW parts, but BMW, like most mainstream car brands, actually doesn't make most of the parts in the cars. They buy them from various suppliers and just put their own branding on them. And once you figure out the difference between genuine BMW and OE, you can save a lot of money on car repairs. So for those who are unfamiliar, OE or original equipment parts are the same parts that would be installed in the car when your car is being assembled in the factory, but they have the BMW logo scratched off so that they can be sold to third party vendors without the licensing issues. Now to clarify, we're not talking about parts that are similar or parts that are just as good. We're talking about the same part made in the same assembly line, just one gets a BMW logo and one doesn't. The only difference is the OE version costs less. FCP Euro has a great write up on this, which I'll link down below. But the point is, as long as you don't care that your parts didn't come in a BMW box, you can save a ton of money by buying the identical OE version of the part instead. On most BMWs, the battery's in the trunk, which is actually a good place for it because it helps out with weight distribution and it keeps the battery clean and dry. If you ever need to jumpstart your car or connect a battery tender, there's actually terminals underneath the hood for easy access. If you're not going to be driving your BMW for days or weeks at a time, I highly recommend picking up one of these battery tenders. Um, being winter time in Michigan right now, I'm not really driving the 340 a whole lot. I've got another car for winter driving. So if I know I'm not going to be driving for more than like three days, I just keep it plugged in with this. I'll link this exact one down below in case you want to pick one up. So you know what I was just saying about BMW parts just being rebranded? Well, it turns out that the official BMW battery tender is just a rebranded C-Tech. And I'm sure some guy's going to be bragging on the forums that he bought the real charger from the dealership uh, when the real one is, well, you see where I'm going with this. One important thing to note if you ever need to replace your BMW battery is that it needs to be registered to the car afterward. Basically, the car keeps track of the age of the battery and it adjusts the charging over time to optimize the battery's lifespan. The registration process resets the battery statistics and sort of lets the car know that a new battery has been installed. Now, back in the day, this could only be done at the dealership, but nowadays you can even get an app on your phone like Carly and do it right in your own driveway. Gasoline powered BMWs from around the mid 2000s onward don't have oil dipsticks anymore, instead it uses sensors and an algorithm to measure the oil level and quality. This is frustrating for a lot of first time BMW owners because you can't simply open the hood to check your oil like you can on any other car, instead you have to go through your iDrive menu and check it on the screen there, and even though it's pretty accurate, there's two big problems with this system. Number one, being BMW electronics, those sensors are known to fail, in fact this happened recently on my friend Brian's M3, which is a fairly new car. And number two, the car needs to be operating temperature to even get a level reading. That means if you just change your oil, maybe you were a little tired or hung over or something and you're second guessing whether you put in the right amount, you actually have to start your car and let it run for about 10 minutes before you can even check the level. While I think it's stupid that there's no dipstick and I'm not sticking up for BMW here, it's not the end of the world and it shouldn't keep you from buying one of these cars. You just have to use common sense. Um, change your oil every 5,000 miles with a good quality full synthetic oil. Uh, check in your engine bay periodically for leaks and a combination of that in the electronic measuring system and you'll be just fine. On most cars, the turn signal stock will stay in the position that you're signaling until you've made the turn, but on BMWs, it always returns to the neutral position, even when it's still blinking, and it's really trippy the first few times that you use it. You can do a half press and it'll blink three times for changing lanes, or a full press and it'll stay on until the steering wheel cancels it. A lot of times you'll go to do a half press to change lanes and accidentally do a full press, 
and because you're not turning the steering wheel doesn't cancel it so you boop it down now it's blinking in the other direction but the stock is still in the neutral position it probably looks idiotic from outside the car and honestly that's why a lot of us have given up on the turn signals altogether Many modern BMWs are equipped with run flat tires from the factory and therefore don't include a spare tire and a lot of first time BMW buyers think that they have to keep using the run flats and might be frustrated with the high cost of replacement, the harsh ride, and the lack of options. But many enthusiasts like myself have ditched the run flat tires and never looked back. Personally, I keep a portable air compressor and a tire repair kit in my car at all times. For longer road trips, some people will buy a full size spare that they can keep in their trunk. And personally, since getting AAA, I've even had this car towed a further distance than I would have been able to drive on the run flat tires anyway. Remember, run flats don't make you invincible, they simply allow you to drive up to 50 miles an hour for up to 50 miles. In my experience, the only people who truly love run flat tires are the people who sell them. My final piece of advice after buying your first BMW is just take some time to read the manual and get familiar with your car. I can't tell you how many questions I've got over the years where the answer was right in here all along and you might even find a feature or two that you didn't even realize that your car had. Alright, so I asked you guys on Instagram what caught you off guard when you bought your first BMW. A lot of people said the door lock button being in the center of the dashboard. I agree. To this day, I find myself fumbling around for that. The infamous BMW gong sound. Okay, so BMW makes the sound if there's like a serious engine problem that needs your attention, but it also makes the same sound like if you don't shut the door all the way, if you don't have your seatbelt on, um, if the car's low on gas or if the temperature outside is below 37 degrees, it makes the same sound. So a lot of people have like PTSD from that. Like every time we hear that sound, our stomach drops because we think that there's something seriously wrong with the car, but usually it's no big deal. Reverse gear on manual BMWs. So on a lot of manual cars, they'll have like a lockout lever on the shifter to be able to shift the car into reverse. But on BMWs, you just have to really force it in. You have to use a considerable amount of force. Now, when I test drove my E90 back in the day, the salesperson let me go by myself, which is pretty cool. I drove around for a little bit and I pulled into a parking spot and took me like five minutes to figure out how to back up. Though your first BMW might take some getting used to, they're excellent cars when maintained properly. If you already have one of these cars, leave a comment down below and let us know some things that took you some getting used to when you bought your first BMW.